Good morning. I wish we were in the garden today, but I actually slept well and slept in this morning. So it's gotten way too hot and probably too noisy to shoot outside. Well, today I plant a hydrangea bush that I am really psyched about. Been wanting that for a long time. So for this craftsman bungalow home and this uh, cottage garden kind of yard I'm trying to cultivate, it's a must have. Uh, also, lots of growth in the garden and let's just get there already. I'm working on my second cup. Let's do this. So I went to the nursery with, um, uh, incredible hydrangea in mind. I didn't find it. They had a lot of varieties. It was probably there. I don't know. But I ended up choosing the Everlasting Jade. Um, Incredible gets ginormous and showy, but where I was putting it by the driveway, it's uh, right up front. It's not going to be, um, you know, back in the background. Uh, it doesn't have to be huge and showy to be seen. And these um, are smaller, more compact blooms um, that should be good for cutting and using in the house. So um, anyway, yeah, I thought that that would uh, be a good fit. Um, so I, I never know, I've put a few <laughs> There's been a succession of bushes in this same spot and uh, they keep going, but I think I'm finally paying attention to um, right plant, right place, you know? I, so I know um, the hydrangeas need partial shade. They can use a little sun in the mornings before it gets hot, hot. Um, according to my friend P. Allen Smith, Late in the day, the afternoon sun is not the way to go. And in this spot, it will be shaded in the late afternoon, hot, hot sun. So, uh, and two, hydrangeas need good, well-draining soil. And in this part of the yard, the soil's pretty good. It's not, you know, clay after two inches like we have in some places. I took um, the dirt that I excavated when I put in our stepping stones, which I think I excavated too much under the stepping stones and I have hollow spots. I wanted them to be flush with the ground so we can mow and not have to like step over anything or have any tripping hazards. Um, but I've probably made mole condominiums. So the everlasting jade starts out with a, um, a light green bloom that then matures into white and uh, I think it'll be pretty perfect. So I took that excavated soil from the stepping stones and I've mound, made a mound um, just to ensure the hydrangeas will get good drainage. I think they'd probably be okay there but again this is an old home site and I'm not exactly sure <laughs> Uh, if there's something funky buried. I did find a bunch of bleach bottles, which were, you know, probably 50s or 60s, but still, I think I've dug the, any weird stuff out from under that area, but who knows. So I've got it up elevated uh, out, of the, out of the ground a little, and plus it's for sure gonna grain, uh, drain because of the mound. So we'll see how it goes. I'll try to keep it well watered. There's a lot of growth happening in the garden. Wow. First of all, this double-headed lily that I was given, I wish I remembered 
Wish I could remember where I got it from because, whoa, I really got a gift there. They're really sweet. So I've got a volunteer pumpkin growing amongst the tomatoes. So I read that one of the, tr the tricks with uh, squash bugs, which it has, is uh, to plant something early, which everything got kind of bitten back. And I, this is a volunteer, but there were earlier volunteers. Anyway, to let squashy things, uh, to, gr to grow them early, let the squash bugs have them, pull every bit of that plant out when it's infested, burn it, and then go ahead and try to plant a second crop of squash because the squash bug's life cycle is pretty much over at that point. Uh, hopefully by removing the plant, you won't have anything um, overwintering in any stems or in the ground or anything like that. And maybe with the second go round of squash, um, they'll make it and they won't be infested. So I'm gonna try that, we'll see. I'll let this pumpkin be a sacrificial lamb and we'll see if a, a later crop has a better chance. This week we harvested banana peppers. I don't really know what to do with them. I think I might uh, do refrigerator pickles or and or uh, have a host gift. We're going to get to visit some dear friends that we haven't seen in like two years that we usually regular in regular times we see more often. But um, yeah. So anyway, that was a lot. Um, a lot of growing kind of getting to where we are harvesting some um, our peas uh, are pretty much done it's getting way scorching hot now but we did get a few sugar snap peas but um, green beans are moving right along and we should be swamped with green beans and the asparagus beans should be awesome on that arbor so I'm looking forward to that but they're growing crazy which is great. The corn is getting up there. Oh, the sunflower, the volunteer sunflower, way above my head, and the ones I've planted are getting there. So heads up, I've been looking into Patreon, which is a way a lot of creators um, supplement their income. I don't want to get too down deep in the weeds, but uh, a while back, YouTube, to try and um, protect the viewers to try and as a way of uh, keeping ahead of content that shouldn't be out there. I don't know why, how that makes sense. But anyway, um, they did a thing that it has been popularly called Adpocalypse. So if you're not a huge creator, which I'm not, uh, and you don't get a certain amount of views in 12 months, even if you're part of the partner program, and even if they're showing ads on your videos, you aren't eligible to get a share of the money made by those ads. So, um, yeah, it's really discouraging. It's not like I was making a ton, but, um, but it was validating, you know? Um, so, I'm looking into Patreon, and that is just kind of, uh, think of it like a tip jar, really. It's not at all like a, a monthly Netflix subscription idea. It's, uh, I really feel like it's a good way to build community, and, um, and uh, I think it's a, a really cool opportunity for us to do more interaction and for you to have more of uh, a voice in what I'm making. And there's a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun opportunities for us to just play together. So I'm looking into Patreon. I want you to think about uh, if, you, if you like this sort of thing, what we're doing here, uh, about being a part of that. And I'm thinking if we can reach a certain goal, we'll make this morning show a five day a week show again. I would love that. Um, 
another idea is like I have a lot of show ideas <laughs> and if you guys uh, green light uh, one of those ideas and we get up to a sustainable kind of place where I can uh, make those shows you can help me launch new shows and get them going to a point to where they uh, would be advantageous to sponsors. We've got to grow a thing a certain bit before sponsors, before it makes any sense for them to join in. You know what I mean? Anyway, a business. Um, anyway, hope you have a great week. This is, uh, this is a lot of fun. I would love to do it more, but this is what we got. We did it. It's not perfect, but it's done. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Life's what you make it. Let's get our hands dirty.